UFC Orlando coming up this weekend. As you can tell by my man, everybody knows him as uh, Twitter and MMA world's biggest breaking news of the matchmakers, Marcel Dorf. But he's got the background, the Orlando background with uh, Wonderboy Thompson and Kevin Holland. So, Marcel, thank you for joining me, brother. How you doing? Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, I'm doing well, man. Uh, good to be here, you know, and uh, looking forward to uh, talk some MMA with you. And uh, yeah, again, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to talk to you, man. Of course, man. The pleasure is all mine. I appreciate you coming on my little show here. Tapped Out's back next week, by the way. So we'll get you on there again soon, too. Um, but dude, like a week off of fights, I'm craving some some fists to be thrown. I'm sure you are as well. So let's uh, let's talk some fights, like you said. Kevin Holland getting a main event appearance against uh, Wonderboy Thompson, who we haven't seen in the octagon in a while. Before I even get to my bets, uh, I do want to talk about this main event because I don't have any money on this fight. I really don't know who's going to win. Uh, I'm not even sure of what the odds are right now. Kevin Holland's a minus 165 favorite over Thompson at plus 135. Oh, man, that actually makes me want to maybe throw money down. But I just want to get your opinion on that fight. How do you think that main event goes down? Yeah, man, it's an interesting main event, man. Obviously, because uh, listen, man, what we still call him Wonder Boy, but you gotta say he's almost forty right now. You know, he's thirty nine. Yeah, so um, he's been a long time in the game. You know, he's always been in the top ten. Basically, has been for a long time in the top five, right? He's now in the top ten still. Um, he lost his last two fights, but he fought two grapplers in Gilbert Burns and Bilal Muhammad. Uh, hasn't fought for uh, this year so far, so it's his first appearance this year. Um, if you look at Kevin Holland, we know what you know what you get with Kevin Holland. He's in your face. He's coming on to you. Uh, tries to pretty much to knock you out. You saw, for example, in the uh, in the Tamin fight, he knocked him down and then he submitted him. So yeah, uh, that's also a possibility. You know, um, yeah, it's it's an intriguing matchup for the for the simple reason that it's can Kevin Holland. Uh, can get through that distance with Stephen Thompson. Well, Stephen Thompson will try to keep in a distance, pick his shots, uh, making points, and try to win the fight. Obviously, also try to to win by stoppage. But Thompson is also very comfortable to fight five rounds sure. and win the decision. You know, mm -hmm. so that's the main thing. Can he do it? And if you ask me, I think it's a possibility. So there's definitely uh, a possibility Kevin Holland comes through and gets the TKO or the knockout. But man, Thompson, he's so tough to 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 beat at his own game, you know. And he always knows to keep the distance. And I, I, people maybe think like maybe Holland can put in some takedowns, but it's just not typical Holland. You know what I mean? No. Holland also loves to strike as well. So maybe he tries, but I don't think he has the same credentials on the ground as a Gilbert Burns or a Bilal Muhammad. You know. Right. So I I see this fight being a standing uh, thing for a long time. Probably five rounds. Uh, for, for me, I think Stephen Thompson will come out victorious after five rounds. But it's it's him and me. Everything can happen. Yeah, man. Month, so, yeah. I, I kind of agree with you there. I think especially at underdog odds, plus 135. I mean, how could you not throw some money on Wonder Man? Uh, I mean, and it's interesting because the last fight he fought against a striker was all the way back in 2020 against Jeff Neal. He won that fight by unanimous decision. Uh, it, it's going to be interesting because Kevin Holland, as you said, as we can all presume, will strike you know holland's not one to go for the takedown no matter how much training he's done in american top team so great main event i'm very excited for it uh interesting to see if it's an early finish by one of the two or if they get to go five rounds because in kevin holland's last five round fight obviously it didn't make it past like three minutes against jamayev um so i'm just excited for that main event i might even add that wonder boy thompson bet at plus 135 onto my official picks but not quite yet fellas not quite yet um Let's talk some of my bets for the card. I have one, two, three singles and a parlay we're going to go over. I'll start at the uh, the prelims, work my way up to the main card, and end with my parlay. want to get your thoughts on each. Let's start with the ladies. One of my favorite female fighters, Amanda Hibas, is coming up against Tracy Cortez. It's a pick em right now, minus 110 apiece. I don't really get that. I think Hibas should be the bigger favorite here. 27 years old Cortez, 29 years old Hebus. It's not like there's a crazy age discrepancy, but when you look at the skill, the mixed martial arts between the two, you have to lean Hebus. I mean, she has the better striking, the better jujitsu, at least. I don't know if I can say grappling. You know, Cortez obviously has great wrestling, but I just see Cortez as still being a little bit green in, in the UFC, and maybe that's me being 
foolish or whatever. She does train with her boyfriend Ortega, and she does have experience in the octagon, two fights in 2022 already. I just lean Hebus. I think she's the more dangerous fighter, better striking, better BJJ. I think there's more avenues for her to win. Do you agree? I know you said you agree with two of my picks, so hopefully this is one of them. I feel the same way about this one, actually. <laughs> I, I I feel like uh, Tracy Cortez, she's probably talented, you know, but this is her huge step up in competition as what she fought so far, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and for Rebus, uh, you can you can pretty much say in that fight against uh, Caitlin Shukagin, it could have gone her way. And imagine it went her way. She would have been the number one contender at that moment. Yep. You know, that was a super close fight. So for me, it's like... Um, and listen, MMA math doesn't work, obviously, for many reasons, many right. times. But, but still, you look at the look at the opponents they have fought, and you look at the quality of the uh, what they can do. I think Cortez really good, but I think she has a, still a big learning curve. You know what I mean? And with Rebus, she is actually stand up is not the best, you know, but her ground game is really good, you know. Yeah. And the same thing, Cortez isn't a stand-up fighter. She's also more of a ground fighter, mm -hmm. wrestling kind of uh, kind of ask, you know. So for me, it's like you got to compare both girls, how they fight. And I feel like Rebus is, is, is further in her MMA game than Cortez is. So, yeah, that's why I also lean Rebus. It's actually the exact same reason, you know. And... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it will. Be, don't get me wrong. I think it will be competitive, but I think Reba's just better in general right now at this moment. So, yeah, I'm with you there, man. Yeah, uh, I'm glad we're in agreement. And again, if if Cortez does win full coming out party, uh, I will be very impressed. And she ha she deserves a spot amongst the ranked female fighters. Um, moving on here, I believe that's the only female fight I have. Yeah, moving on here, gentlemen, for the rest of the uh, rest of the video. Next fight I have, I'm going to put some money on an, on an underdog in Roman Delize going up against Jack Hermanson. This one I'm a little bit nervous about. I'm 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 putting this out there with some hesitation, with some caution. Be wary, people. But man, Roman Delize is a very dangerous fighter. He fights for the finish. We've seen that of late, especially in his last fight against Phil Hawes, which Dan Murgley out of my man, you, you botched that. You botched that finish there. That didn't need to happen. Um, but the leads, man, I mean, knockout power, great grappling, constantly going from submissions, even if he's on the bottom, throwing elbows, just aggressive all around, doesn't like to fight the distance, likes to finish you. I think against Jack Hermanson, that might be dangerous. Jack Hermanson's kind of maybe gotten used to going the distance. He's had a much higher level of competition lately. That makes me kind of think, you know, that the, the point striking sort of game comes into play, especially his last fight against Chris Curtis. I just, I don't know if that's going to work against the Lidze. I don't know if his grappling attack's going to work. You know, we've seen Jack out grapple people before, catch you in submissions. I don't think that's happening against the Lidze. I don't think you're going to be able to hold the bigger the Lidze against the cage and clinch control for the fight. I don't think you're going to be able to be on top of the Lidze and control him for the majority of the fight. Uh, I, I really like the Lidze here. I don't think it's just the odds, but I do think the odds make him even more dangerous in this fight. How do you feel? I feel the opposite way in this one. You ah. know, I, I I honestly think there is a chance the Leeds can catch him. Don't get me wrong, there's definitely a chance. But um for me it's too risky to take that chance, man. I think Jack Hermanson, I know maybe he hasn't been really uh how do you say that entertaining or whatever so far in the last couple of fights, you know. But you know what you get with him. He's a tough fight for almost everybody, you know. Um his basics are, are pretty good, in my opinion. And uh, that's that's the thing, you know. Uh, he's he's a top 10 guy for a reason. Or I think he's in, still in top 10, right? I think he's yeah. 7 or 8. He's a top 10 guy for a reason. Uh, I know he lost to Strickland uh, earlier this year. Wasn't a great fight of his. I know it was a split decision. I don't know what that one ref was, was seeing because it was a clear unanimous. We know but, MMA uh, judging, bro. Ah. Uh, don't, don't talk about it please i'm i'm getting upset every time i think i talk about it so yeah. um yeah after that he won against chris curtis wasn't the best fight but this was a fight he needed to win and the, the thing is you got to give jack credit as well he's taking fights that do nothing for him in his career you know he was yeah. supposed to fight darren till till to, uh, pulled out he just fought chris curtis he, did, he doesn't care you know now he was supposed to fight Derek brunson 
Brunson pulls out, he just takes a Delisa fight. He doesn't care. You know, I respect that a lot. Delisa is, de is a very dangerous fight. We saw it, and he impressed me against Kyle Dawkins. Not going to lie. I yeah. really impressed me there. I didn't expect that to happen at all. And then the horse one. Yeah, he got horse in, the, in, that, uh, in that submission. He you know, caught him with the knee, snapped his knee. Oh. Yeah, and and should have been stopped, man. But on the other hand, it was such a beautiful knockout combination. I think a three punch combination. Mm -hmm. Everybody was like, "Wow!" It. I think Dolitza, honestly, he was happy the fight didn't get stopped because this is much more beautiful for him to to win like this. Yeah, uh, for us, obviously devastating. Um, yeah, I, I I feel like that Hermanson can can uh, tough it out for three rounds and I think he gets a decision win here but uh, like you said there is definitely value on Dolitsa via stoppage you know I think yeah. there's definitely a possibility um, so um, I see both sides of this I, I'm taking Hermanson but I see your side for sure and that that's how I feel you know I'm taking Dolitsa here but if Jack fights the fight he should fight then what you're saying is correct and he likely will win that's one thing about Hermanson I always like and I usually do bet on Jack I'm just not doing it here he has great fight IQ, fantastic fight IQ. He doesn't fight the fans fight. He fights his fight. Fans don't like that. doesn't matter. You're still buying tickets. You're still watching and he's still catching dubs. So Jack Hermanson might get it done here. That's why I said I'm hesitant, but at plus 165, I got to sprinkle a little bit on Roman Delize. Uh Next fight, the one I'm most excited to talk about is the co-main event. Bam Bam tied to Ivasa coming in as a plus 180 underdog against Sergey pa Pavlovich at minus 225. I didn't even know this fight was happening until the other day. I, I thought this was on the next week, the pay-per-view. Saw it was the co-main event now. I was like, yo, let's go. Bam Bam's back. But plus 180, I have to cash on Bam Bam. I mean, you have to think this fight between these two guys is going to be a striker's delight, right? Pavlovich coming off a big knockout win over the 37-year-old Derek Lewis. Great win, again, against a 37-year-old Derek Lewis. I don't know how much value you can put in that. Uh, oppositely, Taito Ivasa has been on a freaking mean streak. And when he hasn't been on a mean streak, he's been losing fights against top competition. You think you think Sergey Popovich has five rounds, again, or however many rounds it was against Cyril Gan? No. I, I simply think the experience here is going to carry Ty. If this is a striking match like it should be, Ty Tuivas has got them bombs, dude. I think he's got more leg kick power, more hand power, and honestly, some mixed fight uh, some mixed martial arts and great fight IQ behind it all too. Tai Tuivas is just a better fighter here. I could be wrong. Sergey Pavlovich could like, you know, win this fight and then I'd be like, you know, sure. Sergey's legit. I just can't say that fully off of a win over 37-year-old Derek Lewis. Uh I think Tai catches him, man. I really do. I'm on the opposite side on this one, man. I <sighs> see a, I I see a stoppage here as well, by the way, but uh Ooh. I think it's Sergey here, man. You think Sergey's knocking out Ty? Yeah, first round. Wow. Um, honestly, I think Ty comes back too early from his uh, fight against Cyril Gan. You know, that fight was a sick fight, was an amazing fight in yeah. Paris in September. But that's been a short amount of time to come back. And and Ty asked for this fight, by the way, to come because he wanted to be home for his uh, for his uh, son in, for Christmas. Yeah. So he wanted to have one more fight in, and he hopes to fight in Perth in February. So um, that that's the thing, I think, you know. And if you look at Pavlovich, Pavlovich has also, like, since his loss to Overeem in his debut in the UFC, he only got first-round wins, uh, first-round stoppages, yeah. TTOs, knockouts. So... They pretty much do the same thing, you know. They're go, they're going for the knockout. Only Ty is more well known by the public, I think, uh, has more spectacular wins because he fought better opponents so far. So for Pavlovich, it's it's, it's a really big fight, you know. You, you fight a guy who is uh, actually coming off from almost a title eliminator last time out, you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one, man. It's, it will be an intriguing fight. The thing is, Ty, I think Ty has more power. I think Pavlovich is technical, technically better than Ty. Than sure. That's what I think, you know? And that's why I went with Pavlovich. But they don't get me wrong. If Ty lands, Pavlovich can be knocked out as well, you know? So yeah. it's like, for me, it's a coin flip. I'm taking uh, Sergey. But uh, like I said, it's a coin flip. I, I At least I, I, I want to say I don't see this fight going 15 minutes. And oh, I don't yeah. know. No I, I, I don't hope I jinx it now. But... But uh, I don't see that happening. <laughs> you I'd just be made it. Surprised. 
You just said that, and now it's going to be Derek Lewis versus Francis Ngannou all over oh, again. Oh, please, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, but I, you bring up some great points there because I agree that uh, what we've seen so far, Sergi is the more technical striker. And I think when heavyweights, when you're talking technicality, goes a long way compared to bantamweights or flyweights, even featherweights. You know, a technical heavyweight with the power they possess is extremely dangerous. You know, technicality, precision at heavyweight is probably the most useful tool, even over power. Where I disagree with you here a little bit is I always thought up until the Cyril Ghosn fight, I always said Tai Tuivasa is a just going to throw and pray kind of guy. That's what we've seen from him. It's always gone in his favor, except I missed little details. I missed his distance control. I missed his leg kicks. I missed his clinch control against the cage. I missed his takedown defense. And in that Cyril Ghosn fight against the best fighter in the world, debatably, other than Francis Nagano, or excuse me, best heavyweight, we saw all of it on display. So after that uh, Cyril Gan loss, the performance that Ty put on, I don't think he's just a swang and bang kind of guy anymore. I think he has that power. I think he slimmed down a little bit for this fight. And I think he himself is going to put on a super technical striking performance. But it's two heavyweights who are extremely strong going at it. So of course it's a coin flip. The safest bet here is first round finish. I don't care who gets it done. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, man. Um, but again, that's my fight of the night because as you said, there's no way that one goes to distance and someone's going to sleep. And that's just what we love as MMA fans. Uh, even though we're in the media and stuff, we got to be professional, but we like to see him go down. Uh, yeah. And definitely when this main card over here starts at 4 a.m., I definitely see like to see an early finish. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like 2 a.m. with you right now, 2.30? Yeah. You're the man. You don't have to be awake right now. You can go to bed if you want. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Thanks, Marcel. Love you, man. All right, so let's talk my last bet then so you can go to bed soon. Uh, it's my parlay. I don't really have a whole lot to say about this. I feel like kind of a uh, an idiot almost putting two minus 400s in a parlay because every handicapper on Twitter is looking at me like, you can't do that. That's too easy, but I'm doing it anyways. Uh, <laughs> Mateus Nicolau coming in minus 400. Put him with Jonathan Pierce, minus 450. That's a minus 180, minus 190 parlay, depending on where you're looking. I love that value. A lot of people are going to say you're crazy for putting two minus 400s together to get that, but I'm very confident this hits. Nicolau going up against Matt Schnell, danger Matt Schnell. I just think Nicolau uh, outclasses him everywhere this fight goes. Probably controls him on the mat for 15 minutes. Matt Schnell's dangerous in the striking department. He's very uh, you know active on the ground, but Nicolau on a four fight win streak. I, I just think he's too good for Schnell here. And I think the minus 400 is going to be very fitting here. You go to the next fight. I'm talking about Jonathan Pierce going up against 38 year old Darren Elkins, eight years younger than Elkins. You look at that statistic alone, eight years younger, the younger fighter wins at a 70% clip. Have to take that into consideration. Uh, Pierce is also on a four fight win streak. I just don't see where Elkins can win this. Elkins wins fights by his durability, making it a long time, out grappling you and catching you in a submission. But that's kind of Jonathan Pierce's game too. And he's younger, way fresher and more dangerous. So I really think the Pierce Nicolau parlay is safe. I think it hits. Knock on some wood. Do you agree? Yeah, I do. Um, the thing is with Jonathan Pierce, Darren Elkins. Darren Elkins is not going to win any fight anymore in the UFC as it goes to a decision. You know what I mean? The dude mm -hmm, has so many mm -hmm. scar tissue in, in, in his face. The judge is always against him. Even when I think sometimes he got the round, I'm sure the judge is going 10 9 in the opposition because they think they did heavy damage while they maybe just have two spots open. On it's a scar him. tissue, yeah. yeah. It's a huge scar tissue, yes. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. So Jonathan Pierce is safe bet, in my opinion, in this one. And if you look at Mateus Nicolau Matchnell, this amount of Matchnell hears me here, he kind of knocked me out. But I think Matchnell is um is kind of a it's a bit disrespectful to say, but it's kind of a gatekeeper in the flyway division. And with the gatekeeper, yeah. I mean he is good to beat the guys who are just under the top 10. But if there are guys above the top 10. He doesn't get it, get it, he can't do it. You know what I mean? He was close with Roy Val, not gonna lie, man. The last time he fought Roy Val, yeah, but Very Roy close. Val clo uh, almost uh, completely switched it around and got the submission there. And got Sumudergi was super close, man, but there he got it around and he finished Sumudergi. Round of the year, man. It was amazing. Yeah. Amazing fight, man. So if you look at Nic Nicolau, is a little bit more. 
I won't say boring, but uh, calculated. You know Technical, what I mean? calculated, sure. Yeah, exactly. For example, uh, I remember the Manal Cup fight. Many people were upset yeah. that he got that win over there. It was super close, you know. And I think the Dvorak fight last time, he, he felt pretty good, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he. I mean, he, let's be honest. He got cut by the UFC at the moment when they want to try to get rid of the flyweights, remember? Yeah. When he lost to Dustin Ortiz and still was only lost in the UFC. They took him back after that and he hasn't lost since. So Five fight uh, win streak. Yeah. So for me, I, I also picked Nicolau in that fight. Uh, I think he wins by, I would pick him by decision, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're uh, on the same boat in this one. <laughs> That's cool, man. We agreed for most of this. Uh, I think two out of the, or yeah, half of the bets you agreed with, half of them you didn't. That's fine because the ones you did agree with are going to be the ones I bet a little heavier on. So folks, just tail us and you'll cash out too. Uh, Marcel, before we get out of here, my man, I just want to ask you, Anything I didn't mention, any bets I don't have that you like? Anything in particular? Ooh. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, uh, I think Phil Rowe is an underdog, right, against Nico Price. Yes, uh, Nico Price is a – let me get that for you real quick. Nico Price is minus 145, Philip Rowe plus 120. Listen, man, I love Nico Price, but I think Nico Price is getting older as well and also – uh, I think Phil Rowe has a good chance to get the win there, you know. So yeah. if I have to pick an underdog, another underdog, I pick that one as well, you know. Uh, you got uh, Mark Diacasey against Michael Johnson. I don't know who's very favorite there. I uh, guess Diacasey, Diacasey is, I think, minus where we got there. Diacasey minus 300, Johnson plus 250. Yeah, That's going like, to be a close fight. That's going to be a close yeah, fight, though. I like Johnson there, to be honest. But the thing is, do I want to bet on Michael Johnson? He's so inconsistent. You know what yeah. I mean? That, that's a thing. So uh, Mark Diacasey uh, became uh, Mark Diacasey enough in his last two fights. So it's like, <laughs> you know, Johnson is a good wrestler as well. You know, mm -hmm. he's basic. He is a basic for his basic was wrestling when he came in the MMA. So uh, you don't know if he can stop the takedown. It's crazy. Where we, if we took two years back, I we know. would say uh, we he can stop a takedown against Mark Diacase. It's like why would Mark Diacase doing a takedown? You know he just I mean? wrestles people now. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's nuts. You know, but uh, I I think like uh, Diacase he won his last two fights against Borchev and against uh, Hatsovich. Yeah. I think Johnson has better takedown defense than both sure. those two guys. So I'd love to see it. That's a that's a fight that's close, I think. So I, I maybe I think a bet on Michael Johnson, but I'm not sure yet. I'm, I don't really uh, trust him actually enough, but uh, I'm, I'm kind of on his side on this one. And man, this is not for a bet, this one, but man, I love Jasmine Horegi to, oh, to yeah. watch her. I think she's amazing. Um I see you win against Estela Nunes, man. But that's, I think she's a plus, she's my, a minus three or not minus four on the favor, probably. Minus right 350, now. yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I wouldn't bet that. I think that's a safe bet, but uh, yeah. Throw in a parlay, maybe. But uh, I took, dude, that Johnson and Jacasey, I didn't really know that line was that wide. That, that's going to be a close fight. I don't like that plus 250 underdog. I mean, yeah. excuse me, even if Jacasey wins. It's going to be by probably a close decision. Um, so but we'll see, man. Regardless, banger card ahead of us this Saturday, December 3rd. Only three left of the year. So we really got to buckle up and enjoy. But Marcel, my friend, thank you so much for joining me. Go to bed. It's 3 a.m. In, uh, in the <laughs> Netherlands. So really grateful and appreciative. But uh, enjoy the fights on Saturday. And let's, let's make some money. For sure. Thanks for having me again, man. It's, uh, it was amazing to talk to you again about MMA. I always love it. And uh, yeah, maybe I go to bed. I don't know. Let's see what happens. <laughs>